What's up everyone, it's Prometheus, and today, nestled between my Mini and my Mazer is a Puck Press Q2. So first things first, I want to see how it measures up to an actual tamper. So to do this, I'm just going to tamp one dose and just see what it looks like. Is it flat? Is it consistent? Does the tamper really need some kind of reinvention? It's a very simple tool used for a very simple task. So let's take a look at what the puck press can do that maybe a tamper can't. So straight off the bat, it looks nice. It looks like a tamped flat bed. Everything's very even, or at least to my naked eye, it looks even. But let's do a quick test with the standard tamper to see how flat it actually is. So we're gonna set our portafilter down at eye level and just set the tamper on top of the bed. And from the looks of it, it looks pretty flat. So I would say that it stands up to a standard tamper. It does the job it's supposed to do, it tamps. But we're not done yet. So I wanna see what these shots taste like side by side, having the tamper on one side and the puck press on the other and see if there's a major difference. I'm gonna try and pull very similar shots with the same input and output and see if there's any real difference between the two. My expectation is there shouldn't be because basically what's happening is the exact same thing that would happen with a standard tamper except it's a mechanical mechanism. I don't see how that would be any different side by side, but we're about to find out. So let's pull a shot using a standard tamper and see where it falls. But before we do that, we're gonna actually see how close I am to my standard tamp. I dialed in the puck press to be 20 pounds. That's about average for what I use. I like to let the grinder do a bit more work than the tamper. And it looks like we're pretty close. The last shot was about 35 grams. This one is about 37 grams. So we're not too far off in terms of the tamp pressure. So let's see what it tastes like and see if there's any major differences. Now, after tasting both shots, they taste the same. There's really no difference. Granted, there's like maybe a gram or two extra in one of the shots, but altogether, it's pretty similar. Next up, I wanna find out, is it consistent? Because that's the major selling point for a puck press. It's not the fact that it tamps for you, it's the fact that every tamp should be exactly the same across the board. So I'm gonna do three shots side by side. Each shot is 21 grams in. I'm gonna run it for 28 seconds. I'm gonna do my best to pull the shot out as quickly as I can after 28 seconds to see how close they actually come. So instead of showing you three shots one after the other and wasting a bunch of time, I'm gonna pull all three shots all at the same time and you can just see how they all run basically without much or any intervention. So let's take a look at all these shots and see where they fall. Now, if you're watching the timers, you can see they're all really close in time right now. We're gonna try and stop them all, like I said, at 28 seconds and see where they're at. So pull them all out. And looks like we've got some pretty close numbers. So the first shot was 21 grams in, 42.2 grams out. Second shot, 42.3. And the last shot, where I was a little bit slow on pulling it out, it was about 44.3, so that was really close. But now I'm curious, can these results be replicated for less money? The initial outlay for a Puck Press Q2 is nearly $1,100 US, so that's pretty expensive for a tamper. Can I do the same thing with an OCD tool or a push tamper? So I'm gonna find out. So I'm gonna set the OCD tool to a good depth and tamp with the OCD tool. It takes a little bit of effort to spin because it's a little bit more resistance than usual, but eventually it spins pretty freely and I've got a tamped shot. So let's just take a quick look at this one. It's not quite as clean as the puck press. There's some grinds on the side, but generally it probably will do the same job for less money. But let's find out. Let's see how the shot runs. Now, full disclosure, I have used the OCD tool as a tamper in the past. I have found that it does kind of run slower than a standard tamper, purely because there's something to that spinning motion that maybe even compresses the coffee even further than normal. So on here, we'll notice that using the OCD tool versus the push tamper, which is coming up next, the push tamper runs quite a bit quicker. And I'm sure if I were to pull a shot with the puck press as well in this mix, you will see that the puck press probably runs quicker than the OCD tool, but in the end, all these things just require a little bit of a grind change or a depth change, whichever one you wanna mess with. The moral of the story here is 
You don't have to spend the $1,100 on the actual puck press if you want consistent product. You can get a push tamper or an OCD tool. I think both of them are about $150 US dollars and you can just go to town. There's no actual skill really involved there. You just set the depth and go. Anyone can do it and the results should be identical nearly every single time. Last but not least, does distribution matter? The short answer is yes. I tasted some shots with and without distribution on the puck press and I noticed a pretty significant difference in terms of the acidity, sweetness, and balance. And so I figured I'd take the bottomless portafilter and see what's going on in there. So without distribution, you'll notice there's some channeling. It takes a long time to go to one stream and the stream is off center. So in the end, doing your tamping with the distribution tool might actually save you time than using the puck press. So let's see what the shot looks like when you actually use a distribution tool. You'll see how it comes together really quickly. The shot looks like it's very evenly extracted. You'll see lots of dark tones, lots of light tones. Everything is coming together really smoothly. The center stream is right in the center. I did notice a little bit of a spurt, so there is, you know, maybe a small channel in there, but overall distribution worked better. All right, final thoughts on the Puck Press Q2. So first off, yeah, it's a consistent tool. It does the job it's designed to do. It tamps flat, it does it consistently, and it fits easily between, you know, a grinder and an espresso machine, which what more can you ask for as a home barista? But personally, I can only see a few reasons to get a Q2, especially if you're a home barista. This tool is designed for a cafe, even though this one is actually specifically pushed towards the home market. But personally, I can only see a few reasons to bring one of these home. The original puck press was designed for a cafe market where consistency is king and you have baristas coming in and out and dial-ins really matter. But if you're looking at a home barista, which the Q2 is designed for, I think that it falls a little short. And not only because it's almost $1,100. It really only seems to be of use to someone who has issues with the actual physical act of tamping. If you have like wrist issues, shoulder issues, or something like that, where tamping with a standard tamper just doesn't work for you, the Q2 might be a great option. But there are other options out there that are less expensive. Like I showed in the video, you can recreate the same exact type of thing with an OCD tool or any distribution tool for that matter, as well as a push tamper, which are a fraction of the cost. In the end, this is a cafe tool and not just for any cafe. This is for a super crazy busy cafe that's doing hundreds of drinks an hour, if not more. In general at home, it's not really needed. And as someone who's put years into this craft, into becoming a barista who's efficient and can handle these different things and think about these things critically and just is more comfortable with working with my hands, I think that it just won't find its place on my counter and I think a lot of home baristas probably feel the same way. So this might be a swing and a miss from Puck Press because this Q2 is specifically designed for the home market. but. At $1,100, you can get a really nice grinder to pair with your espresso machine for that, or at least close to it. I mean, it just seems like not a great option. And you know, maybe if this was a $250 or $300 thing, maybe it's a consideration just to have one. But in general, for $1,100, that's huge. That's a huge amount of money for something to just tamp. And that's my thought. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Do you own a Q2? Have you worked with one? Do you have one at work in a cafe you're working at or anything like that? I'd be curious to know your thoughts. It seems like, you know, it's a little bit of a divisive thing. When I posted it on Instagram, there was different responses about how great it was and other responses about how it was kind of taking away from the craft or not really intended for home. So I want to hear your thoughts. Drop them down in the comments section below. And I want to do a quick thank you to my December Patreons. The roaster tier, we have Aiden, Bound Coffee, Claire, Jonathan, Mika, Nathan, Samantha, Spookus, Steven, and Tim. And of course, can't forget the barista tier folks. Thank you so much for your help. If you want to join the Patreon, I'll put the link up above for that as well. I can't help but just be super grateful for you guys for jumping on board. So thank you again. That's awesome. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. I always see a lot of people who watch who aren't subscribed. I'd love to have you on board. Hit that little bell button for notifications. Follow me on Instagram at Spermetheus, the blog at Spermetheus.com. And as always, stay caffeinated, pony boy.